Have you ever wondered how npm run build compiles the TypeScript and the TSX into a JavaScript application and link all the image passes into your React application correctly and even run tests before you making any serious mistakes? All this magic is actually the result of well, a well-structured build script. And in this video, we are going to review all the magic under the hood uh, with the ES build and uh, a simple React application. By the end of the video, you should be able to understand the build script, the process, and you should be able to create your own um, tasks and uh, using that task to automate your overall development process. And uh, let's get started. The very first question you would ask is, what is a build script? A build script is a set of instructions or command writing in a script language that automate the process of building a software project or application. <clears throat> it could be the same language you use to build your application or you, you can choose a different one. It typically involves tasks such as compiling the source code, uh, building assets such as images, um, uh, CSS, and uh, run tests, different, different types of tests, and then finally generate the production-ready artifacts. So the application we are going to build in this video is just like this. It's a very simple uh, React application. It's more, almost a static page. But to be able to build this application, the final HTML and the, CSS and the JavaScript product, we need a lot of different steps. I have already created a build script. So if we run npm run deploy here in, the, in my local, um, as you can see, it, it has a few steps. The first one is prepare. You can see there is a npm run build step and a npm run test. And in the build, it runs ES build uh, and using the source code index.jsx and the bundle uh, into a main.js. And then after that, it runs the um, npm test. And in the test, it runs some assertions like um, if the worker message is thrown up or not. And once the um, build script is successfully run, it will uh, actually deploy the final product, which in turn will run the GH pages and using the destination folder as the, um, the final result. And then if everything goes well, it will say published. And once it's deployed, uh, we can get the latest version of our application here. If I now modify something here, let's say I don't want to show this message or I just don't want to amend something like Jintao here. And then we want to rerun the uh, deploy script um, and it, it will firstly uh, bundle them together and then run the test. If test passes, it will publish our product into the production, but eventually we will have that new amended uh, message uh, served on the final production environment. So let's say we made a mistake uh, during the development process. Mm, for example, someone deleted the React here in a message. So the test will fail, right? Because the test at the moment is verifying if the uh, regular application is on a page or not. So if we run the deploy, it will fail on the middle of the step and it will stop. And uh, we need to fix that problem first. So let's run it again. Uh, the bundle is actually fine. You can say um, it's actually done in 40 milliseconds, but the test failed because it cannot find the message. Um, and then it stopped which is kind of cool. It stopped us to uh, releasing a defect into production. And uh, then we need to fix that right away. Let's do that here. And we build or like deploy again. It will again run all the tests and build and uh, then eventually release the package. Now let's dive into the code base and see what is actually happening. So in the application, we have a package.json. So in the package.json, we have a script section, which defines all the um, script, named script, and then we can use npm run script name to run that script. And when we run deploy, 
deploy actually uh, invoke the GH pages dash D the destination folder. That means it will use this as a public folder for that GitHub pages. And before that, there is a step called pre-deploy. That's a convention that npm uh, the package.json is using. So it will search in for all the prefix of pre and uh, post as well after the deployment. Uh, once the npm run deploy, it will run the pre-deploy first. And when it runs pre-deploy, it will run the prepare. So the prepare is defined as uh, run the build and run the test. So it will run the build. So in the build stage, it will use the ES build. And using the uh, source index.jsx as the entry point and uh, um, the bundling it and the output will be in the destination main.js and once that step is done successfully it will run the test so once the prepare is done successfully it will then run the deployment uh, it will run the js pages command line too uh, so js pages is a library that to publish a github repository under the GH pages branch to GitHub pages. If you are not familiar with the GitHub pages, it's essentially uh, building a static website from your repository and hosted by github.com. So with the GitHub pages, we don't need a host to serve our static files, which is awesome. And uh, it's totally accessible by anyone. So the build command is defined as yes build um, source code into a bundler and the output. If you have already familiar with Wellpack, yes, build is kind of alternative, but much faster. So there are two things yes, build requires, the, the input and the output. So input is the index.jsx, which is defined in our source code in the JSX here. So it's a typical React entry point. And for the output main.js, we can have a look at that. So you can see it's very long. Uh, it includes all the uh, React and React DOM and our application code is uh, compiled and already part of the main.js you can see here. So the main.js is the final product that is used in the browser. So the browser will use this file to create the DOM elements under the hood and you know doing the interactions as well. So apart from the process we just shown, the build script can do much more. For example, it can use it for dependency management, it can run the end-to-end test, it can compile, transpiling, uh, type checks, run the you know, ESLint uh, for your application, it can do the image comparison, a text compressing, security checks, unit test, uh, integration test. All these different tasks can be defined uh, as part of the, uh, the build script. That is normally what you would do in your um, code base. So whenever you find something uh, is, you know, is menu, there is a command that can do that. And then you should include that process as part of your build script. And uh, that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below if you have any further questions. Thank you for watching and happy coding.